Hi, welcome. In this video, I would like to show you that you can create X Sharp applications for .NET Core. Unfortunately, we do not have .NET Core project support yet in our Visual Studio integration. So I will show you how to do this from the command line to give you an idea. We start by creating a C-Sharp Windows Forms application for .NET Core. We can do that from the command line by typing the following command. .NET new WinForm. This will create a couple of files, as you can see in the current folder. Let's have a look at these files by using Visual Studio in, win in folder mode. So I've opened this folder already in Visual Studio, and as you can see, it has created a couple of form files, a normal form CS, form designer CS, with the ResX file. It has created the program file and some files in an object folder um, that are necessary to build this C -sharp project. It also created a CS project file, which is the new project file format for .NET Core, which is very lean. It doesn't list all the source file, it's just uh, this project file format automatically builds everything in the current folder. Now let's have a Quick look at the source. This is a normal form PRG, a form CS, sorry, um, and it has a button exit click. There's a form designer which declares a label, a button exit button, and some dimensions. And in the program file, it sets the styles and the rendering and then runs the form one. Nothing really special. Let's see if we can build this. To build from the command line with .NET uh, Core, you can type simply .NET build. This is running the build, and as you can see in the Visual Studio on the back, it actually creates a couple of files in the .NET Core folder uh, under obj debug and in the .NET Core app 3 folder under the bin debug. Let's see if we can run this code. We're typing .NET run, so we're actually going to run the executable from the .NET Core App 3 folder. And as you can see, it is indeed a label and a button, and the button click handler closes the window. In my preparation for this session, I have created files that are just like the Form 1 CS, Form 1 Designer CS, etc. Let's have a look at these files and copy them to the current folder. So on the left-hand side, you see the .NET files where that were generated before. On the right-hand file, I can see my PRG files. Let's copy the PRG files over. So as you can see now, they're all in this folder. Unfortunately, like I said at the beginning, we do not have this CS approach support the way .NET Core has it now. So to be able to build it, we need to actually create a command line for the compiler that tells us how to link in all the .NET Core assemblies. And there are quite a few of these assemblies. The easiest way to collect this is to capture the build process from C Sharp and then uh, get the command line that C Sharp uses. Let's do that. I'm going to uh, clear my folder first, so to force uh, .NET to actually it's clean, sorry. And then I'm going to build. But I set the build verbosity to diagnostics, and I'm going to redirect the output to a log file. Okay, if we look in Visual Studio, we see that a quite a large log file has been generated. This log file contains a lot of information. Let's look for the command line. It's a line that contains csc.dll. Over here you can see the command line and it's quite large. This is all one line of code. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code and create a new file called 
build.rsp and I copy the source in there. Now what I don't need here is the command line that calls the c compiler and I don't need to know config flag at the end, at the beginning. At the end of the command line, you can see the C-sharp files. Over here you see 4.1.cs. Now, of course, we want to compile 4.1.prg. I have 4.1.designer.prg and program.prg. For now, I'm ignoring the, temp, the new files that were generated in my local temp folder and in the OBJ folder. And I'm also removing the uh, special warning as error at the end. So this build RSP now has a list of all the assemblies that were also linked against the EXA um, for C Sharp. And now we are able to build this in X Sharp. But before I do, I want to give you a quick comparison between the sources that we created with X Sharp and C Sharp. So we see our X Sharp source over here. Um, we have a function start as entry point, C sharp as static void main. Let's take the form CS and the form PRG. Um, for one CS is here, for one PRG is here. And you see it has a constructor with initialized component and a button click handle. We have the same. And the designer. Also, it's very similar. Um, so there's a dispose method. There's an initialized component which creates the label, the button, and the prop sets of properties. The only real difference is that we have a different label. This is the C sharp label, and this is the X sharp label. Okay, let's go back to the command line and let's build this X sharp application now with. Um, .NET Core. So to call, call the X# -sharp compiler, I'm going to call XSC, which is our command line compiler. I'm going to specify that I do not want it to use the normal config because that would tell it to use all kind of framework DLLs. I'm going to use this build response file that we just created in Visual Studio to um, tell the compiler which assemblies to link and which PLC files to compile. Okay, it has compiled, and let's see what happens if I do .NET run. Wow, as you can see, the new file was actually created with X Sharp, and we have a new sample now. To, to show you that this is not all, not all smoke and mirrors, that we actually compiled it, I'm going to delete the DLL here. And I delete the DLL, the PDB from the X output folder, and there's a PMD as well, yes. Um, let's run the compiler again. And you can see in Visual Studio in the background that it actually compiles and updates the files. So what we see here is a true .NET core X sharp application. Thanks for your attention. I hope you learned from this video that you can do XSharp and .NET Core.